Before I get started, please subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any new material that I'm going to be producing in the future. And that helps us grow the channel, grow more content, and help people like you. So I didn't define a type a test case a struct uh, and did all of these things. Uh, I just said this is a variable. It is of type of this structure, which is an unknown structure. And then we're filling out uh, what's going on. And then we can do uh, roughly the same thing. Uh, so for every test case in a uh, Tokenize cases. Um, we're going to um, check that yeah, the test is matching what we want. Okay, so uh, we have the tokenized cases, uh, and, th and this is known uh, at least in the Go world as. Uh, a table driven test. Meaning you have a lot of data and you just run the same function on all kinds of data. Okay, so um, we see now that we have two tests. The thing is that if, uh, let's say, uh, I'm going to have a failure in my test, uh, it's really hard for me to know what is failing right now, right? Uh, I have the output, but what is the input and what, what came in from the test, uh, et cetera, it's not as easy for me to know. So uh, the Go team has support for running what, or the Go test suite, sorry, has support for what is known as subtests. So every subtest should have a name. Um, what name should I give it? You know what, I'll use the text as, as a test name. Okay, so what we can do is tell the test suite to run use the text as the name. Uh, you know what, I'll make it more explicit so and then you say run another function which is the subtest of the current test. Um, okay. Uh, like this. And now when we run the tests, uh, we're going to see them as, you see, uh, as separate tests. They're not one now, a single test, but every test case is, is a test by itself. And we also have the name of the test. Mm -hmm.